Okay, so we are live, and I've got another unboxing today of the G.I. Joe Classified Series, and this is Craig Rock and Roll McConnell. So I'm pretty excited about this one. Uh, Rock and Roll was one of the first G.I. Joe figures I ever owned. He was one of the first G.I. Joe figures. He was in that first wave of Real American Hero that came out in 1982. He was the machine gunner, codename Rock and Roll. Uh, he, he was, uh, I think, I think he was the first G.I. Joe that I got after Christmas. Because on that Christmas in 1982, I received it when I went over to my grandmother's house in the little stocking that she had for me. I had uh, Zap and Flash and Short Fuse and a Cobra Soldier. So those were the first four that I got, technically. But later that day, uh, when I opened my Christmas presents, I got the Vamp and I got the Mobad. So that added to my army uh, Clutch and Steeler. And Clutch became kind of like the Han Solo of uh, my G.I. Joe team. And Steeler became the leader because I thought he had a very, you know, leader sort of look. By the way, I found this Secret Wars t-shirt when I was going through some stuff. And I'm like, wow, it's my Secret Wars t-shirt. I wish I could have found this, you know, yesterday. Is that a wrinkle or is that like where the printing is messed up? Oh, that's Spider-Man's web line. Duh. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm like, well, this would have been great to have yesterday when I did the, the, the two-pack with Captain Marvel and Doctor Doom. So, <laughs> oh, well. By the way, update on the Snake Eyes action figure that I'm working on that I made out of a Robert Pattinson Batman. Uh, I'm spray painting it. I'm in the process of spray painting it black right now. Uh, I spray painted the front half uh, before I left for work yesterday, and I'm probably going to do the back half as soon as I finish this video. So uh, let's have a look at the package. And we've got a picture of uh, Rock and Roll. Very cool looking. It's a nice photograph of the picture. Like a uh, figure. I'm sorry. Nice photograph of the figure. Uh, and then we got a little piece of artwork over here. I really like this artwork. It's very good. Uh, very nice portrait of our hero. Unfortunately, it doesn't really have the space to breathe on this new style of packaging. Uh, and, and ironically enough, I kind of feel like like looking at the, the artwork on this figure and on Shipwreck, I, I kind of feel like, yeah, I got the Shipwreck package right here, so that's all I got rid of it. I kind of feel like these do a better job of selling the action figures than the artwork on the previous wave. And, you know, one of the, my complaints about that is while it was good artwork, I thought it was good artwork. Don't don't at me. Uh, <laughs> I didn't necessarily feel like it was good artwork for selling the figures. Now, when you have something like uh, like 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 with the, the Python officer here. Like, you can have artwork that's, you know, a little more stylized because you're already showing off the figure. But if your artwork is the only thing that's showing off the figure, you need it to be something that sells the figure. And I kind of feel like if these had been the main image on the front, they would have done a better job of selling the figure than, like, the, the artwork for Falcon or, or Cover Girl. As much as I, I did like that artwork as its own thing, like I said, if, if those were comic book covers, I think they would have done fine. They would have sold that comic book particularly if the artwork on the inside matched that style. Because I always hated it when I buy a comic book and, and the artwork didn't match the style on the front. Like, if Gil Kane drew a Superman cover and Kurt Swan drew the inside of it, it always bugged me because their styles were so completely different. Even as a kid, would be not knowing a whole lot about artwork. Like, I know that... that this one artist is a different artist from this art. I want them to be the same. So either get Kurt Swan to do the cover or get Gil Kane to do the interiors. I don't care which one. They're both fantastic artists. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not even trying to like slam on, on those two individuals because those are actually two of my favorite comic book artists. But, but you know, it's consistency. That's what I want. Anyway, I got off on a tangent talking about Superman comics. Uh, let's talk about the, the action figure I'm here to review. So it's got a space shuttle in the back, and uh, 
that makes sense because he's a character from the 80s, like I said. So he'd have like, you know, an 80s space vehicle behind him. But uh, it's not the Defiant. It's just a regular old standard space shuttle like the Challenger or something like that. And uh, I forget if that's a direct reference to anything that was actually on the cartoon. I, I do remember seeing a space shuttle in one of the later miniseries. But rock and roll was only prominently featured in the first miniseries of the animated show. And, of course, they had space shuttles a lot of different times in the comic books, so it might be a reference to that. But they tend to put more references to the cartoons on these. It's kind of basic, you know. Like The, 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 the real hardcore fans of G.I. Joe are the comic book fans. I'm going to be honest with you. It's like, you know, more kids might have watched that cartoon, but the, the ones that stuck around were the ones that read the comic books. So most of us adult fans are, you know, comic book fans. That's just how it is. And I don't mean any disrespect to the cartoon when I say that. So uh, over here on this side, we got this QR code, which I haven't really tried this QR code yet. And since I'm filming these with my camera uh, on my phone, I, I can't really do that right now. <laughs> got all the accessories up here. Got all the accessories over here. That, that's that's what I'm saying. Like, I, I kind of feel like some of this space could have been better used for the art like, and still show the figure. But you don't really necessarily, maybe, maybe like I said, put the artwork on the back so that we can really show off the artwork. And uh, since we already have the accessory breakdown and a picture of the figure on the front, you can maybe put like like a smaller version of this on the back as well, or maybe on the spine. But but use the back for some of that artwork. I think that would be the best thing to do. It's all kind of moot now, isn't it? Because they say that they're going back to having a window in the package. Uh, honestly, I feel like they never should have left that. I think, you know, if it was really done because they cared about the environment, they probably should have looked into, you know, using like some uh, biodegradable plastic or something. And uh, honestly, like I said, I'd wind up just putting these action figure packages in the recycling usually anyway. So I guess they recycled the plastic as well. Since, you know, it had little uh, little recycling emblems on there next to his boot, see? So uh, you can recycle those. Anyway, it's, it's all kind of moot now. They're going back to the old style. So, all right. So there is rock and roll. Rock and roll will never die. So there's the actual figure. And here's a little cardboard foot locker. Make sure there's nothing else in there. And it says rock and roll right there. And it's got the little G.I. Joe emblem. And it says 71 because uh, he is figure number 71, like I said. So let's go ahead and open this up. And it's going to sound weird to say this, but I always liked rock and roll because he kind of reminded me a little bit of my stepdad who was a blonde bearded dude who was into rock and roll. And it's weird that I say this because like, uh, you know, I, I, I didn't really get along too well with my stepdad. Uh, we get along fine now, so that's good. But, uh, but I guess I had enough affection for him. I liked having a GI Joe figure that kind of reminded me of him. So, But we get along fine now. There we go. All right, so here is his M60, and it is indeed an M60. I figure they might have changed around some certain aspects of it to avoid copyright or whatever, but pretty much it's an M60. It has a folding stock, uh, which is actually in two part, not folding stock, a folding bipod, sorry. <laughs> a little early in the morning for me. Yeah, I know it's like 3 o'clock in the afternoon, but that's still early in the morning for me. So it's got a folding bipod, which is nice. Uh, it does seem like it, it pegs in there pretty substantially, so hopefully it won't fall out. I know like uh, the original rock and roll bipod, I'd, I'd lost that thing in minutes. and uh... <laughs> So, uh, but yeah, to me it looks fairly accurate to... Uh, to uh, an M60, it's recognizable as being that particular machine gun. I'm sure somebody out there who is a gun expert can point out like various little minor differences and things like that, and 
don't you know the ammo box is like you know uh, exactly three millimeters to the back from how it is presented on this figure? <laughs> you know nothing about guns, Alan. Yeah, I'm telling you, I know nothing about guns. I know if you point them at the other guy and you you pull the trigger, he he, he goes he goes bye bye. That's what I know. <laughs> by the way, uh, in popular culture, uh, especially as a comic book fan. Uh, I often think of this as being the gun. It, it is the gun M60 uh, that was used by Batman in the Dark Knight Returns when uh, there were three of the mutant gang that were holding a, a baby hostage, and they were going to kill the baby after they got the money. And uh, at one point, uh, Batman bursts through the wall and grabs one of these thugs, and uh, you know. There were three of them, and one of them had been shot when uh, the thug that had the M60 was trying to shoot at a bat that Batman had released into the room. And uh, he was trying to shoot it at uh, what he thought was Batman outside the window. But Batman was actually on the other side of the wall. And uh, Batman bursts through the wall, like like just smashes through the drywall. And uh, grabs the guy and, I guess, knocks him unconscious. And the girl that was with the group puts a gun to the baby's head. Is like, I'm going to kill this kid. Believe me, I'll do it. And Batman shoots her with the M60 since that's the weapon that he has on hand. And then it's got these great couple of panels where, like, you can see just, like, the color fading out of her as she dies. Batman kills this girl. I'm, I'm, I know some people will try to say, oh, he just wounded her. You don't just wound somebody with an M60. <laughs> Either either he killed her immediately or she bled out. One of the two things happened. Oh, he called her an ambulance leader. Sure, tell yourself that if, if that makes you feel better. But that man killed that girl. But she was going to kill a baby. So what do you want him to do? Uh, and But he shows him picking up the baby and he says, I believe you. So, yeah, to, to me, like, you know, they, they, they say, oh, well, Batman says he never crossed that line when he's talking about killing the Joker. He's talking about murder in that case. He's not talking about, like, to save a baby's life. I'll, I'll tell you, if, uh, if if you think it's morally wrong to not kill a guy who's or a girl in this case who's about to kill a baby, who tells you she's going to kill a baby and she's not bluffing, I question your morality, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> I'd do it in a heartbeat. So we're going to extend the bipod and, oh, look, it holds itself up. You can't see it because I set it directly under the camera, but it's standing just fine on its own. Let's go through some of the rest of these accessories. All right, so we've got this uh, uh, automatic pistol. That's pretty cool. We got an ammo belt for the machine gun. We have an ammo box for the machine gun. So, uh, you can see that he has on the front of the package, uh, he has the ammo box on there, but it also comes with an ammo belt. So you can you can display them however you want, as far as that goes. And then we've got some extra hands. We have a solid fist, so you can punch Cobra in the face. That's nice. And we have the uh, this particular hand, which uh, I think is supposed to be like, like devil horns. But devil horns should really be more like this. That's really how you do devil horns. But, uh, but it's still pretty cool that they have that. And then walkie-talkie. And if I know Hasbro and their classified figures, there's going to be places to store all of these accessories. Hopefully. And then last but not least, oh, what's this? This is another reason I don't like this type type of packaging, but uh, there's a smaller bandolier that was in the helmet. So, uh, so yeah, make sure we don't lose that. I believe that smaller uh, belt, this will attach to the ammo box, I believe. All right, and here's this helmet, which uh, I don't know if I can get it to focus sharp enough for us to see it. But we can see that it says Hang 10 on the helmet, written on there like uh, in the style of uh, Full Metal Jacket. You know, I had Born to Kill written on his helmet. Well, Rock and Roll has where it says 
hang ten because he is a surfer. So, uh, Larry Hama wrote a comic for Devil's Due that was called G.I. Joe Declassified. They were doing all kinds of declassified comics at Devil's Due at that time, and this was the one they were smart enough to actually get Larry to write. <laughs> and uh, uh, he wrote kind of the origins of some of the G.I. Joe characters and how they wound up, you know, becoming a part of the team. And Rock and Rolls is the one that I remember the most because uh, it showed him as a, a teenager uh, at the beach surfing. And uh, uh, one of his friends had almost drowned. And uh, this big, burly guy comes in and gives him CPR and saves his life. And uh, Rock and Roll notices a tattoo on his arm of uh, a ranger and uh he says are you a park ranger and the the guy just kind of kind of laughs and says no army ranger <laughs> so that would have been the that would have been like his moment that would have been inspiring him to join the army so and what led him of course to him joining the gi joe team so anyway yeah rock and roll is a a surfer dude Obviously loves rock and roll, plays a mean bass guitar, and uh, plays a mean M60. So uh, <laughs> I guess you could say percussion also. <laughs> so uh, here he is. Great head sculpt, nice long beard. You know, his hair is, is kind of shaggy. And, and I know he's an army guy, but I always think of rock and roll as having like long hair. So uh, I know my three and three quarter inch figure that I made of rock and roll. I used a, I used the head from a, a, a Marvel Universe Thor, like a Marvel uh, MCU, Chris Hemsworth. So uh, I thought that looked pretty good. But uh, still, like, I see this and I recognize rock and roll. It reminds me of that old action figure that I had when I was a kid. Very, very similar to that. So uh, he's got these crossed bandoliers. On his chest, these two uh, uh, bullet belts. And I'm told, although I don't know, that this is the proper way to wear it with the uh, the points of the bullets facing down. And uh, that's, that's uh, accurate. So we see that he has a two-toned green shirt. And it looks kind of like an Under Armour type of shirt with the, uh, with the sleeves rolled up. And... Uh, one minor complaint that I have about this figure is that uh, the original rock and roll had a solid green shirt. And this is like this, this dark green and, and very light green. And i kind of feel like he should have just had a solid green shirt. I know you're going for the under armor look. And while I do applaud you for going the extra mile and, you know, putting some extra effort into paint apps and whatnot that, that weren't a hundred percent necessary. You know, normally that's the sort of thing I like to see. Uh, no lie. Uh, in this case, I kind of feel like it was, it was a uh, uh, less is more would have been the approach here. And I think, I think he would look not just that the figure would look more like the original figure, but he would be aesthetically better than, uh, than, than how he looks now. I kind of feel like that's a little too busy. I do have a, a roadblock figure handy here. I'm going to take this uh, this mini gun out of his hand that I'm working on. It's not quite finished, so I don't want to show it yet. And that's for a custom figure that I'm working on at some point. So I want to see how he looks next to roadblock. And he is a little bit shorter than roadblock, but almost as muscular, which is good because uh, uh, rock and roll is a bodybuilder. So he should be a very muscular character. Let's look at him next to Shipwreck, who's a little bit more average. And he is slightly taller than Shipwreck, just ever so slightly. If you look at where their shoulders line up, it's just a little bit taller. And uh, I think that his arms are a little bit bigger. But, you know, you'd have to hold him next to each other to really see See the forearm? His, his is a little bit bigger. It looks like a little bit longer. So, uh, if it was me, I probably would have made him about the same size as Roadblock. And I probably, like, uh, 
Well, I would have made him the same size as the roadblock figure is, and I probably would have made roadblock a little bit bigger. <laughs> we'll put it that way. Rock and roll and gung ho can be about the same size, but I think roadblock should probably be bigger than anyone except maybe Sergeant Slaughter and Nemesis Enforcer, if they ever get around to that character. So, uh, so yeah, a lot of cool stuff here. Like, I've been talking about just the actual figure itself for a minute, and I've, I've still got stuff to talk about. So he's got, like, a little bit of a, a, a ammo thing around his wrist. Got some uh, some bullet belts attached to that. So I guess that's just, like, emergency ammo that uh, comes up when he needs it. He uses it when he needs it. Where did I put that pistol? Oh, I got so much stuff over here. I got a lot of projects I'm working on. So, well, let's go ahead and just put that on the put the walkie-talkie on the belt. It's got a little hole that it fits into. There's a little peg on the back of the walkie-talkie. You see, so you can peg that into the back. Where did I put the pistol? That's gonna drive me nuts. Maybe it fell on the floor and I didn't notice. Ah, don't tell me I already lost that. <laughs> oh, geez. Okay, well, whatever. We'll, we'll, we'll come back to that. We'll come back to that. So then the helmet uh, fits on his head. Not quite as snugly as I would like, but it should stay on. There's a little pouch in the back of this helmet. And I don't know if that's maybe something they actually do. Oh, I found it. There we go. I don't know if that's something they actually do in the army, have a little pouch on the back of their helmet, but uh, it, it seems like a, a weird place to keep your wallet. I don't know. <laughs> so I did find where I put the pistol. There it is. So uh, let's see how it fits into the holster. Eh, not quite as snugly as I would like, but I, I think it fits in well enough. So might want to be careful about it falling out in your toy box or something if you keep your toys in a toy box. But I think most adult collectors probably just display all their stuff on a shelf, so it should be good enough for that. And there he is holding the gun. He holds it just fine. There we go. Pretty cool. I do wish he came with a knife. I kind of feel like every uh, G.I. Joe character should come with a main weapon, be it a rifle or a machine gun or an Uzi or whatever, and a, a sidearm like this one, and a knife. I kind of feel like like it, all of them should come with those three things. Now, if you got a character like Snake Eyes and you want to give him a sword, you can give him a sword instead of a knife if you want to, but I'd probably rather him still have a, a knife on hand. So with Snake Eyes, you know, go ahead and add one more weapon and that be the sword. You know, Obviously, with a character like Storm Shadow, he doesn't really use a gun. He uses a bow and arrow. So, you know, bow and arrow can replace the, 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 that can be, is, is, you can consider that his main weapon. And he comes with a sword, two swords, actually. And, uh, you get what I'm saying, though. Scarlet should come with a crossbow and she should come with, like, uh, also a pistol and a knife. Rock and roll, uh, roadblock. Those guys should come with their machine gun and a pistol and a knife. Uh, Gung Ho, good example of, of how they did it. He came with a grenade launcher, pistol, and a knife. So, all right, so here's what it looks like with the ammo box assembled. And uh, you put the little ammo belt into the ammo box and into the, where, where the ammo feeds into the machine gun. And here's the longer ammo belt. And that should fit in there just fine. And it, 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 it goes in there kind of loosely, so you can actually pull the the belt to the machine gun like, like that if you want to. And uh, I'm pretty sure it does feed in that way, right? Yeah, because that's where the ammo box would go. But unfortunately, because of the way mine was packaged, it's curled up the wrong way. <laughs> but let's go ahead and put the gun in his hand. See how he looks like when he's holding his M60. And that's pretty cool. 
it would have been nice to have like uh uh like how Valiverse has those uh those open hands to hold the other end of the weapon. That would have been a good addition to this figure, I think. While we're giving him a bunch of extra hands anyway. So but I can kinda just let's see if we can like just kind of bend the fingers around it. Yeah, you can kind of bend the fingers around the around the front of the machine gun. So he can still kind of grip it. But I think I probably would have rather had an extra hand to do that, so I'm not to worry about this hand getting all warped. So all right, and the ammo belt fell out. So I can tell you right now, I'm probably mainly going to stick with the ammo box because it stays in a lot better. So I wasn't sure which one I was going to display them with. And again, I'm glad that he has both. I think that, that uh, it's good to have different display options. And uh, that way, if a fan wants to have them with the, the box, they can have them with the box. And if a fan wants to have them with the, the belt, they can have them with the belt. And that way you don't have people being like, well, I would have rather had an ammo box. I would have rather had an ammo belt. Well, you've got both of them, so what are we complaining about? See, his helmet came off when I was doing all that because it doesn't fit on all that snugly. It's probably not going to fall off if a kid's playing with it too much, but like, like just, just playing with it like this. But if he's moving the figure around and his finger could rub up against the helmet and knock it off. But I like the helmet. It's a really cool helmet. It's definitely like more of a modern tactical helmet than what the original figure came with, which basically kind of looked like a, somebody modified a batting helmet. And uh, I love those old school G.I. Joe helmets, and I'm probably going to print him out one of those as well so I can use those for alternate displays and things like that. Maybe that might wind up being what I do with the second rock and roll I bought. I wound up buying two of these. And for whatever reason, the second one got delayed. I don't know why they wouldn't just show up at the same time. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so uh, I, I think that, that my idea was originally to, uh, you know, originally I wanted to do a version two rock and roll, like get him a cap and paint this shirt tan and get him a Gatling gun. But, but now I'm not sure if I'm going to do that or if I'm going to make him just like a fully old school rock and roll and keep this one as is. I don't really talk about the tattoos on here. He's got like a lot of really detailed tattoo work, all these skulls and things like that. It's very cool. Like they, they even if they wanted to do something like this in 1982, they couldn't do it. Like remember how simplified uh, uh, Gung Ho's uh, Marine Corps tattoo was at that time. And, uh, and, and then, you know, try to think about them trying to do something, something like the, the sleeves that this guy has. And even, uh, even though I kind of just glossed over it earlier, he's even got like the lower half of a skull, like the, the, the jaw of a skull on here. And, uh, the intention, of uh, I'll probably try to do this later is like, he can hold this over his face and it's got like the lower part of the skull face over his face. I can't get it to focus properly. I'm too far away from the thing. It's too small. And something else I noticed while I was looking over this is uh, here's here's a neat thing. I found another hole on the other side here, and I'm betting that we can fit one of these pegs. Well, maybe it's too small. Yeah, I don't guess that's well. Not no, it's not really gonna. Oh, there's another peg on there. Ah, so, so we can we can peg the ammo box into his belt. How cool is that? So that gives us another display option, doesn't it? Because now I can uh, I can put the longer belt, the longer ammo belt, not the longer belt around his waist. I can put that in there, and shasha! Now you can have you can have the belt attached to his belt. You can have the ammo belt attached to his belt that holds up his pants. Well, actually, I don't even think that's the belt that holds up his pants. That's more of like a duty belt. But, but you know, uh, you know what I mean. You know what I'm saying. So he can, uh, he can do that. That's pretty cool. 
I'm going to take that off now. I'm just going to put it back on there with the This might be what he does when it starts to run low. There we go. So, uh, so yeah, he looks pretty cool when you get them all geared up. He looked pretty cool just out of the package, but you know he does not have a backpack, so he's 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 got enough stuff like uh, carrying around with him. I guess he doesn't really need a backpack, but uh, but yeah, that's pretty much how how that turned out. I think they did a really good job uh, updating him. And keeping him true to the original design of the character, it like I said, it, it it feels very much like that original rock and roll figure that I had when I was a kid. Now that one actually didn't have an M60. That one had for some reason they decided to give him this old World War II machine gun that was like a Nazi machine gun. <laughs> I don't know why they picked that one for that figure. I always felt like he should have come with an M60. And he's usually depicted in the comics as having an M60. So, uh, so I, I think that that definitely uh, works better. I think most people would probably agree with me on that score. Uh, like I said, I think the only thing they could have really done to improve this figure, and I think would have made him better, is uh, to to give him like a solid green shirt, or even if they didn't want to do a solid green shirt, just make the uh, give it a little bit less of a contrast between the two shades of green. Like, like this is like, this is uh, on a scale of one to 10, this green is a 10 and this green is a one. So I'm saying like, maybe, maybe make this green, keep this green as a 10, but make this green more of a five, maybe even a seven. So there's like a little bit of differentiation, but it doesn't look like two completely different colors. The only thing I can think of is since they were really going for that under armor look on the shirt, is that they, they wanted that contrast to be apparent. But I don't think it needed to be that apparent. I think it could have been like slightly less apparent than what it actually is. So anyway, I think that's pretty much it for this episode. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe and all the funny YouTube stuff down below. Uh, since my other figures got delayed, uh, that means that the Copperhead, I was thinking would be going to be here today. That one's actually going to show up Saturday. So I'm probably going to do a review of that on uh, Monday since uh, I don't really like to do reviews over the weekend. So poor old Copperhead, he's just going to sit there unopened for a couple of days. And uh, But I've got plenty of other stuff I can work through with the all this this backlog of stuff, this pile of stuff I got sitting on this chair over here. Lots of cool stuff to go through. I've got some McFarlane's. I've got some Masters of the Universe. I've got some Fortnite. I've got, uh, uh, what else do I have? Uh, it's like like that Hulk Hogan figure I keep teasing. So uh, so yeah, but that's pretty much it for this episode. We'll talk to you next time. Bye.